Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A husband and father shot and killed at his front door in the middle of the night. His wife telling us she believes his killers were after something inside their home. A Detroit mother and her boyfriend sentenced to prison today in the kidnapping and murder of a 13-year-old boy. But first, temperatures hitting 70 degrees and we have officially broken a record. Brandon is clapping. Everyone of at home is too. So I guess what, 68 was the previous That's record, it? right? Yeah. 1941. It's been wow. that long and shattered it here at noon already. In so November. We've got a few hours still to go of uh, sunlight and, and warming potential. So let's start with uh, the forecast. It is a big swing. Let us enjoy today and get stuff done because the weekend is going to be a tough one around here. 70 degrees at Metro, 70 down in Monroe. We've got 66 in Pontiac, 69 in Mount Clemens, 68 in Lapeer. We're all getting in on the warmth temperatures compared Compared to this time yesterday, 10 to almost 20 degrees warmer. We do have a little hazy sunshine coming through some high clouds, but temperatures certainly could get warmer than 70. But a lot of times these thin clouds as they come over keep us right there. So 70, 72, something like that through the afternoon. Gorgeous, but we've already broken that record and we're getting the winds as well out of the southwest. 10 to 20 in some spots, so that's just bringing in that mild air. You see the clouds over us. It's not real thick. It's not leaking at all, so we're good to go. Coming up, though, we're going to talk about this monster coming out of the high plains. That's a big snowmaker, and it will bring us some snow tomorrow. Sandra. All right, Brandon, we are following breaking news right now in Washington Township. That's where the Macomb County Sheriff's Department is investigating a threat at Powell Middle School. That's where a list created by students has been found on a school computer there. That list we know uh, contained names of celebrities, poets, politicians, and other students to be harmed. Investigators are at the school right now. They're trying to figure out if that threat is real. Of course, we're going to bring you any new information both on air and on clickondetroit.com as well. Two of the three people who pled guilty to killing 13 year old Deontay Mitchell are back back in June. Learn their fate today. Priya Mann was in court as the two were sentenced to prison in a case that sparked an Amber Alert. It was a quick sentencing for both Lillian Roberts and Gregory Walker, and both will spend decades behind bars. 43 year old Lillian Roberts kept her head down as the judge sentenced her to 24 to 40 years. The woman pleaded guilty in the death of 13 year old Deontay Mitchell. In June, the boy was kidnapped, tortured and killed. His body was later found in a field on the east side of Detroit. Roberts pleaded guilty to second degree murder and unlawful imprisonment. I apologize for being here and uh, being here. Yeah, for having you here and wasting the court's time for the, this matter. And uh, I would like to apologize to the Mitchell family. Co-defendant Gregory Walker was sentenced to 40 to 60 years for his role in the child's death. Prosecutors say 13-year-old Deontay Mitchell was killed for taking some cash he saw dropped on the ground. Walker pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and unlawful imprisonment. Prosecutors say Walker beat the child and later choked him to death. He apologized to Mitchell's family. I would just like to say I'm sorry to the family. And the third defendant in this case, Ernest Coleman, was sentenced earlier this month. He was convicted of torture and unlawful imprisonment. He will spend between 12 and 15 years in prison. Reporting from Frank Murphy Hall of Justice, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. On Detroit's west side, a father of 13 is gunned down after someone knocked on his front door in the middle of the night. His wife is telling our Nick Monticelli they believe the men were after their medical marijuana. What happened inside of this home behind me, frankly, is horrific. 60 year old Lester Taylor shot and killed inside of his own home and his wife was almost another victim and she still saw him as he died. It was close to 3 a.m. Margie Taylor and her husband Lester were up early and someone rang the doorbell. Minutes later, she heard a gunshot and ran into her bedroom. I guess they heard me in the room, and that's when they wanted to come in to see who was in there. I guess there was oh, somebody else in there, and they, you know, he pulled his gun back to try to, to make it shoot. And I seen that part, and I was like, oh, he got a gun, and that's when I closed my door. But he must have was trying to open, you know, click it, so he had to try to do too many things. 
and I just jumped out the window. As she was outside, she saw three men running away, so she went back inside of her house only to find her husband struggling to breathe. The whole time he just was coughing up blood and just coughing up blood the whole time. Lester was rushed to Grace Sinai, but he didn't survive. Margie thinks whoever did this wanted to steal the medical marijuana both her and her husband had. You think that whoever did this was here for marijuana? Mm -hmm. And somebody he knew. He knew this person because he opened the door. He a good guy. One of Lester's 13 children rushed here from Lansing, shocked to hear what happened and shocked after just talking to her dad last night, making plans for Thanksgiving. <laughs> He was just supposed to come see me and my baby. I just had my baby. Now, it turns out, according to investigators, that Lester and Margie were growing marijuana inside of this home. They do have some kind of grow operation. However, they're still looking to see if it's actually legal because both of them, again, had their medical marijuana cards. On Detroit's West Side, Nick Bonacelli, Local 4. The EPA has amended an emergency order for the city of Flint and its water crisis. The changes to the order is asking the city to meet requirements before it's allowed to switch its water source again. Flint must finish construction on new pipelines connecting the current water treatment to the new water source. The city must also treat the new source for at least three months and also show compliance with the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act as well. Congressman John Conyers' son has been found safe after missing for more than 48 hours. 21-year-old Carl Conyers vanished on Tuesday in Houston, Texas. That's where he goes to school. He was found by university police and he was briefly questioned. We've been told Carl is now back with his family. At least five people are in the hospital this afternoon after a crash involving a DDOT bus. It happened this morning. It happened after that bus smashed into a Chevy Yukon. This happened at Grand River and Oakman on the city's west side. Right now, the conditions of the passenger or even the driver are still not clear. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. Detroit police now investigating a break in at a bakery on Detroit's east side. Police say someone broke into the on the rise bakery around four this morning. The bakery is on Gratiot near Van Dyke. That bakery is sponsored by the Capuchin Soup Kitchen. We're told the thief made off with at least $100 taken from the register. The break in comes just a few days, as you might remember, after the Capuchin Soup Kitchen on Connor Street was also broken into. Still ahead here at noon, Volkswagen feeling the effects of its emission scandal. Coming up new at noon, find out how many jobs the automaker says it now has to cut. Plus, also an off-duty state trooper jumping into action to save a four-year-old girl, and his heroic actions are all caught on camera. But first, President-elect Trump revealing the first of many cabinet picks. Coming up next, how Congress is now responding to his choices. And we continue to follow that breaking news we've been following for you out of Washington Township. You're looking at live pictures right now from Sky 4. This is where the Macomb County Sheriff's Department is investigating a threat at Powell Middle School. As you can see, Sky 4 now live above the school. That's where a list was created. That list was created by students. It was found on a school computer. That list included the names of celebrities, poets, politicians, and also other students to be harmed. Deputies are now there. They're on the ground at the school. They're trying to figure out if this threat is real. It does look like students are now being led outside. As you look at these live pictures, we're going to bring you any new information both on air and on clickondetroit.com. We'll be right back. We've New at noon, we are learning who President-elect Donald Trump is picking for Attorney General and CIA Director. Tracy Potts joins us from Washington with the very latest on Trump's cabinet picks. Um, I have to tell you that the American people... Kansas Congressman Mike Pompeo has accepted a nomination as CIA Director and Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. Both require Senate confirmation. Do you think you could be confirmed easily in the Senate? I think people have to make that decision. Retired Lieutenant General Mike Flynn has agreed to become National Security Advisor. No confirmation required. President-elect is an open call, believe me. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud.
Mitt is a is a very sad guy. A transition tour says President-elect Trump will meet with former nominee Mitt Romney Sunday to discuss Romney as a possible Secretary of State. You need people of quality like Mitt Romney to be considered for the governing aspects, even if the campaigning was a little bit at odds. The vice president-elect is on Capitol Hill selling his boss's agenda to Democrats. We're beginning to discuss uh, areas uh, uh, that we might move forward on together. We'll try to find our common ground where we can, and of course stand our ground when we can. Pence back in familiar territory, setting up the first 100 days. And it could be back on the road for President-elect Trump. His team is setting up a thank you tour after Thanksgiving for some of those blue states that he turned red. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. More fallout today for Volkswagen over its emissions scandal as the company announces today it will now cut 30,000 jobs. The cuts come as Europe's largest automaker tries to recover from the scandal. Volkswagen currently employs more than 600,000 workers all around the world. Most of those cuts, we should point out, will come in Germany, where the automaker is based. After Volkswagen was found to be cheating on emissions tests, it's now left paying a $15 billion settlement. The company says the cuts will help reduce some of those costs. In Kentucky, an off-duty state trooper helped save the life of a four-year-old girl. Here's what we know. The trooper was on his way home from the gym on Wednesday afternoon when he drove up to a rollover crash. Well, the video here shows a woman running up to the trooper who was told the little girl was inside that car with a pulse but not breathing. The trooper, along with a good Samaritan, performed CPR. She was then flown to the hospital. There she is, and she is expected to make a full recovery. Still ahead, the highly anticipated spinoff to Harry Potter hits theaters today. We're going to have a look at that and much more coming up in our box office preview. Just a gorgeous Friday, Brandon. It's weather in the country right here in the D. Little Caesars Arena. It's hot and ready outside, but a wintry weather mix coming your way, tracking Saturday snow next. Well, as you can imagine, this time of year, it kind of stinks to be a turkey. Uh, what is it like knowing that you are about to be prepared to be the guest of honor? Oh, make that the main event on the dinner table, not at the dinner table for Thanksgiving. Well, when you only have a few days left, I suppose, you party like it's 1999. We're going to call it Ode to a Turkey. Today at 4 on First at 4. Be the block. Well, in case you are just joining us, we have broken a record today. Yes. How wonderful is that? It, you know, a broken record on a day like today could go any direction. Right. It could be snow, it could be record cold, but no. We are celebrating a record high temperature. I wish it were the kind of broken record like happens over and over again, broken record, but no, it's temperature wise, 70 degrees plus 70 is our noon temp. Notice the snowflakes are flying in the background there. We've got scattered rain showers coming ahead of a cold front later tonight. So again, let's get out and enjoy this little on the breezy side out there, but that's okay with this warmth tomorrow. Sideways snow. I don't think we're going to get a ton. There could be a couple of isolated areas that get a lake effect snow no squall or two where it could stack up a little bit, but the wind and the cold will be the bigger stories of the weekend. Here are those numbers out there, both Monroe and Detroit in 70 degree temperatures, two of our four zones, and we're close in our west zone at Howell, 68. We've got 63 in Port Huron right now. 70 plus with that hazy sunshine, high clouds and warm breezes. The old record, if you missed the top of the show, was back in 1941 of 68 degrees. Bye bye. Overnight tonight, scattered rain showers. I don't know that we're going to going uh, going to get a lot of of coverage with these rain showers, but certainly do expect wet roadways if you're out late, late tonight and overnight. Here are some of those clouds over the next couple of hours. We get this uh, little bit of cloud cover, but it thins out and, and really nothing more than a milky sky with a couple of breaks in there. So, I mean, listen, could we hit 75 degrees? Not completely impossible. Here's a big storm that is 
monster snow in parts of Minnesota where they're expecting still another several inches. Uh, but for us, let's show you the timeline up here at the top and the rain showers through uh, again 10 11 o'clock tonight scattered about the area through the overnight and then tomorrow late morning into the afternoon that push of cold air. One of our more aggressive snow models and this kind of worst case scenario, but it has certainly less than an inch, maybe a, a coating on the grassy surfaces. Areas of western Michigan could be a couple of inches and then up near Traverse City, maybe three to six inches of snow. An isolated spot or two around Metro Detroit again could get one of those snow squalls that lays down a quick inch or two up north, but mainly temperatures dropping through the day. The winds cranking wind chills will be in the 20s both days of the weekend. Lesser amounts of snow or precipitation around on Sunday, but I think we're going to get some lake effect flurries chilly before that Lions game and also want to warn you about a rainmaker that looks like it's coming our way on Thanksgiving Eve, Sandra, a big travel day. All right, Brandon. Well, it has been five years since the last Harry Potter movie, but today the Wizard World is back with the spinoff Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Here's Raphael Seth with a look at this week's box office preview. Yesterday, a wizard entered New York with a case. A case full of magical creatures. The cat gets out of the bag in Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. His cousin to the Harry Potter franchise follows Eddie Redmayne on a trip to New York. He's a wizard with a case full of magic monsters, but when some of them get loose, it causes mayhem in the muggle world. Fantastic Beasts is rated PG-13. Any kind of movement, and your spinal cord could sever. Miles Teller takes a knockout punch in Bleed for this. He plays boxer Vinny Pazienza, a real-life champ with two world titles under his belt before a car crash in 1991. Doctors aren't sure about his chances to even walk again, but Vinny refuses surgery and returns to the ring within a year of the accident. Bleed for this is rated R. Well, I can't be his guardian. Well, your brother provided for your nephew's upkeep. Casey Affleck becomes a father by default in Manchester by the Sea. He's already sparking Oscar talk for his portrayal of a troubled janitor chosen to take care of his nephew after the untimely death of the boy's father. Manchester by the Sea is rated R. It's really just the hair. You can grow it out. Are you even up there? Haley Steinfeld prays to the god of Clearasil in The Edge of Seventeen. She plays a high schooler eternally in her awkward phase, but when her best friend starts dating her brother, it's a social abandonment that may never clear up. The Edge of Seventeen is rated R. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, Local 4. Still ahead, dozens of local business leaders spent last night sleeping outside. Coming up, find out what they're raising awareness for. We'll be right back. Briefly, saw Some local business leaders spent the night sleeping outside. It was all for a good cause, of course. The effort known as the Executive Sleep Out now in its third year. And the event includes dozens of local business leaders spending the night sleeping outside. It's all to raise money to bring attention to homelessness. And this is video of the sleep out last night. This was at the Michigan Covenant House on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. 61 sleepers were able to raise more than $300,000. That is a lot of money. They will never forget it because of what they raised and, and how nice it was. They Seriously, should have been freezing out they there. They locked out, right? <laughs> Great weather. Thank you so much for being with us today for Local 4 News at noon. We hope you can join us again for Local 4 News at 4, 5, and again at 6. Want to show you some special friends we have in the studio today? These are juniors and seniors from Genesee Career Institute. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for being with us. They're from Flint Township. Have a great Friday, Our everyone. Future leaders right there. Hey, guys, have a great weekend. Woo! Woo! Enjoy the snow.